untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack 1, pick 1. We are greeted with... Not a very good rare, unfortunately. Sigardos Plunder. What else do we have? A vivisection, nice card effect in blue-black. Especially, it doesn't lack decayed zombies to sacrifice. Village Watch is okay. Mentor for green-white is a playable card too. No commons outside of Eaten Alive that jump out at me. So I think the pick is between Eaten Alive and Vivisection. Some other playable cards for sure that we can hope to wheel. I think I'm leading Eaten Alive here. It's pretty close. Second pick. I've got some white uncommons. Not a fan of Cathar's Call. Chaplain's fine. And Sacred Fire is pretty fun if you're red white. And then looking at the rest of the pack. Silver Bolt's decent, and then the Ecstatic Awakener, also quite promising. So I'm kind of uh, leaning towards taking the Awakener here, and then try to pick up some Sacrifice Fodder. So we could still be black-white, we could be blue-black, that makes a bunch of decayed zombies. Or we, we could technically even be like a red-black Steal and Sacrifice deck with the one Act of Treason in red. Which combo as well with Eaten Alive. But now we're getting a nice incentive for Blue Black with a Blade Stitched Scab. So I'm probably gonna pick that up. Some other potentially playable black cards, Blade Brands, combos with the Decayed Zombie, Whisper for a more aggressive deck. And then, yeah, Cemetery, probably not a very exciting card. And the Amalgam is playable at 5 if we need a 5-drop. Okay, another Awakener looks good. So want to keep our eyes out for any Decayed Zombie Maker, as well as like the Occultist at 2 mana, which we can sacrifice to draw a card. Search Party Captain is a pretty fun one in white. Rise of the Ants, probably good in blue-green. And anything else that jumps out? Yeah, definitely some playable cards here, but still happy taking the Awakener. So we're not 100% committed to blue, but we're definitely playing black. This pack has maybe like a flip the switch to provide a token can also keep up both the Awakener's ability and instance like Flip the Switch, so they do have a little bit of synergy. Don't hate it. There's also the Collector, although that feels like it's going to be better in a more aggressive deck, maybe Black-Red, as opposed to what we're drafting. But it's also a consideration, would keep us more in black than committing more to blue. And now, yeah, I mean, the Interloper is a nice aggressive card. Just don't know how aggressive our deck is planning to be. Another Blade Brands. Also seeing some red and green cards pretty late. But Interloper also quite late 6 pick, so maybe we should switch to Black Red instead. But I'll take it for now. Yeah, the 5-drop definitely would have worked out better in the event that we do pivot into black-red. The one issue with black-red is that the Awakener gets a little bit worse, since there's just not as many decayed zombies to sacrifice. But we'll see. And not a whole lot left in this pack. There's a Pax Betrayal, I suppose. If we want to combo it with Eaten Alive and at 6 mana with the Awakener. A bit expensive. Blood Pact is kind of whatever. 
think I might just rare draft here. And then big fan of the hobbling zombie. And there's another collector at five. Probably stick to the zombie. Yeah, black seems like a good place to be for us. Second color still undecided. But I'm kind of hoping to pick up some more decayed zombie makers and uh, other creatures we can sacrifice. Shady Traveler, probably better in black red than blue black. And then there's a behemoth, which also kind of ties into our sacrifice theme a little bit. Okay, take a collector, but hopefully we don't have to play it. I guess there's also Secrets of the Key, just a very expensive card draw effect. I'll take the collector. It is a reasonable blocker. Blade Brand or Bat Whisper. Close call. Could definitely use both. Depending on how reliably we can get the hidden to make the bat token. But now we got both. Alright, so we're definitely black. Another blade brand, so not too sad we missed out on the previous one. Okay, second pack. Our rare is going to be difficult to cast in our deck, so we're probably looking at Archivists as a, a decent value creature or a Phantom Carriage, which uh, can also give us a nice two-for-one of sorts. No flashback or disturb in the deck yet. So I might be leaning Archivist here. For a bit of card filtering and then a 2-1 flyer that can keep filtering later. And then some decent cards we can hope to wheel, including another flip the switch. Ooh, nice. Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia, perfect alongside the Ecstatic Awakener, making a decayed zombie every turn. There's also the Morbid Opportunist, which is one of the best uncommons in the set, as well as Dreadhound, which could be a nice curve topper for us. So this pack is stacked. Another Awakener too. But I think it's still Jadar here. Since we're kind of light on zombie makers. Although it's a tough call with the Opportunist too. Yeah, just a curve of Awakener, turn to Jadar, turn three, sacrifice. Seems pretty huge since we're light on two drops. Ooh, wow. Crafted Identity is another bomb. Organ Hoarder also an excellent four drop. But don't think I can pass a Crafted Identity. Novice Occultist also, card we're hoping to wheel. And somewhat realistic that we do get it back. So another very stacked pack. But this settles me nicely into blue-black. Okay, next we're looking at maybe Mysterious Tome as a mana sink. There's a Blood Pact which could play well with other instants like Flip the Switch. Another Behemoth. Don't think we need to prioritize a second one but could be okay and then a Rotten Reunion could also have some synergy here. But uh, yeah, I'll take the Tomb. Nice to have a late game mana sink. Next, probably gonna take the Diagraph Horde. Just a very nice card that makes a bunch of decayed zombies for us. Gives us graveyard hate. Does a lot of work, especially in blue-black. And uh, Blood Thief, probably better served in a vampire deck, black-red. Gale Drifter, also playable. Just think I prefer the Horde. 
Midnight Ambush looks good. Pretty light on removal so far. And maybe we'll play a Devious Cover Up. Don't think I'm playing a Locked in the Cemetery. I don't know, both are unlikely to make the final cut, I would say, but. Another Behemoth versus Rotten Reunion. I feel like I'm gonna wheel another one, anyways. But I'll take another Behemoth for now. Alright, there's a Reunion if we want it. Or a Flip the Switch. It does play well with the Awakener to an extent. Alright, nice. Wow. Tenth pick, Morbid Opportunist. I'll take it. Uh, Dreadhound also would have been nice, but... Alright, Occultists over Zombie, mostly for Curve, as it just sets up the uh, Awakener so nicely. And then now I'll probably take the Reunion. Already have double behemoth. Blood Thief, maybe. Alright. Last pack. Opened Hostile, Hostile. Not an amazing card. Does have a bit of sacrifice synergy, but just seems a bit slow to get going. Another Eaten Alive, however, looks good. So probably take that. There's some other playable cards here in blue. Consider, Fading Hope, Firmament Sage I think is also playable, and the Midnight Ambush. Defenestrates looks good too. Just a solid removal spell, even if it doesn't handle all flyers. So our deck is shaping up nicely. If I were to make some cuts, maybe the Blade Brands can go. Don't think this is an interloper deck, despite the card being very good in other archetypes. Collector can go. Not sure about the Devious Cover Up. Bat Whisper can probably go too. So, something like this. Looking at the curve. Yeah, probably not going to play both Blade Brands. There's another Interloper, but again, not for our deck, really. Um, Observer could be okay. Do have a few Instant and Sorceries. This can help us cast. And if nothing else, I can sack it to the Awakener. Some more fine playables here. Didn't think I'm playing a third behemoth. Shady Traveler also doesn't really fit into what we're trying to do. Maybe I'll play a Geist Wave. Alright, I'm interested in a lot of these cards. Holy moly. A Dreadhound, Foul Play, Eaten Alive, and Awakener are all cards I would be very happy with at this point. So which is the best one for us? Kind of looking at this foul play. Dreadhound would be another good curve topper, but it feels like I don't have shortage of things to do with my mana. Yeah, this is tough. I don't have a whole lot of flashback, otherwise Dreadhound would also go up in value. But a tough call to make with not a whole lot of time to decide. I'll take my first crawl from the cellar though. Yeah, that's a great point. Any removal spell in a deck with the uh, Morbid Opportunist also becomes much better. And it only draws a card off Eaten Alive if we sacrifice one of our creatures because it exiles. So that's one of the few drawbacks of exiling if you have a Opportunist in play. Some pretty late blue-white cards too here, but yeah, I don't think any of these are making the cuts, so I'll just take an uncommon for the vault. Also a late Rite of Oblivion, but we're not going to splash it. 
I don't think I'm playing a second crawl from the cellar. So again, uncommon for the vaults. Uh, second midnight could be okay. We'll have to see in deck building. I think we've got uh, enough playables now. Late interloper. But yeah, black was just wide open this draft. Just happened to get some good blue cards at the right time with a grafted identity, but also could have ended up in a slightly different configuration. So need to make about two cuts. The Observer, Blade Brand, I could see cutting. Wow, last pick Dreadhound pretty much. I'll take it. Uh, I might cut some of the counter spells since we don't have a whole lot of instants. So like a Devious Cover-Up can probably go. And then a Flip the Switch maybe. Say Observer, Blade Brand, Thing Blade Brands can easily go. Plenty of ways to use our zombies profitably in the deck without needing Blade Brand. Although it does have upside of like trading for a big green creature, assuming we can block, which is of course not going to be the case with a Decayed Zombie. It is good with like Occultist if we can chum block Blade Brand. But the Occultist is already going to be used by a lot of different cards between Eaten Alive and Awakener. So, seems okay. There's another Midnight Ambush we can consider. Happy with the two drops. The threes look good. One flip the switch, also negotiable. And then could see cutting one behemoth, although it's not bad. Because we have a lot of ways to sacrifice our creatures, so I could see them being too taxed already and behemoth being awkward to cast. So what does chat think? Do we play an extra counter spell? Do we play an extra midnight ambush? Or do we play an extra behemoth? All cards we already have at least one of in the deck. Just deciding on uh, the last card pretty much. We'll go with the double ambush. Looks good. So this is the deck. And then we should have enough uh, sacrifice fodder between the reunion. We've got flip the switch making a zombie. Then, of course, the Diagraph Horde. Hobbling Zombie leaves behind a token. Jadar makes multiples, and the Occultus we don't mind sacrificing. So I think we have just enough zombie sacrifice fodder here. The yeah, deck is functional without blue mana, but it really doesn't function without black. So this might be a 10 7. Let's battle. Bit of a clunky hand, although single blue mana for archivists goes a long way. I'll try it. Man, I sure miss those dual land cycles at common and limited, like the campus from Strixhaven. Mana bases just aren't the same without them. Alright, there we go. Probably gonna save the ambush. Although long term the stinger is still annoying. They might have like an interloper here we can kill. Nothing? Yeah, still don't have a turn 4 play lined up. Decisions, decisions. Is Dreadhound too ambitious? 
against red black they could have removal to take it out having my own removal against red black is pretty important so i could see an argument for discarding dreadhound then again i don't want to be threat lights although we do still have the disturb as well so it feels like we're gonna have plenty of ways to spend our mana yeah, let's discard the hound can always get it back later Ooh, Tomb. Let's attack first. This is an instant. Yeah, if I play Tomb next turn, we can potentially activate Tomb Ambush. Or Defenestrate. All right, reunion's not bad. Let's see, I guess we'll start with Tome. And then reunion probably now. So they cannot have their own reunion in response, potentially. And it doesn't seem like they're holding any instance. Alright. Possible I'm being a little bit too aggressive here, but... Uh, this Diagraph Horde is going to put a lot of power and toughness in play. And I think we have the removal to back up the aggression. So this is sorcery speed. There's also the chronicle we can use if we want to. Although I guess the more aggressive line is eaten alive, sacking the zombie, playing horde. Which seems reasonable. And then probably no need to exile anything. Alright, still removal in hands. Dreadhound's not bad. Although we can defenestrate it. And then I could get back my own Dreadhound as well for the future. But yeah, this seems good enough. Bone seems pretty dead. I was deciding whether or not I wanted to send both decayed zombies or maybe like just one in case we pick up something that requires a sacrifice. But then again, we still had the Rotten Reunion. Just plenty of options. All right, that's, uh, that's right. The Crawl also gives us a plus one counter. So, would have had lethal here with Chronicle, cast a crawl, put a counter on the horde. Important plus one counter to remember, so we actually had lethal here. On to the next one. On the play, fine hands. Don't have double black, so I can't foul play plus Jadar, but I can foul play crack a clue, which is maybe still worth it here over two damage.
because we need to hit our land drops. Plenty of sacrifice fodder for Behemoth. Can play Tomb. And that's it. Can play Jadar. Probably go for Tomb. Really need a second Swamp. Um, sure. No ho, my tomb. All right. Time for Jadar then. Sets up our Awakener, assuming we draw Swamp. Brutal Cathar, true to its name, although we do have an Eaten Alive at the ready. Can't stay away, yeah. Opponent's got some nice rares. So what's our play here? Did draw the Swamp, so we can awaken her. Sacrifice, I could... Reunion exile their flashback card before they get to flash it back. And then eaten alive. Hmm. I guess the timing on this, I want to sacrifice this to my eaten alive. So Jadar makes a zombie. And then I can do this at instant speeds on the opponent's upkeep. So let's do that. Sacrifice a creature. Alternatively, I could play Awakener, but yeah, I really don't want my opponents getting their zombie back. So I'll do this. Not the most mana efficient turn, but that's okay. Uh oh. Mask of Gristlebrands. And we're sort of out of removal here, so that's going to be a tough one to beat. But we can try. So attack with one zombie, sack the other to the behemoth. Yeah, Jadar's just awesome here. Glad we picked it up over some other great cards too. I think it was in the same pack where we ended up wheeling the Opportunist. And if we draw land for Dreadhound, we can keep up the pressure. Uh, I see. Oh, opponent wipes the board. Seems pretty effective. But we get to follow up with the Dreadhound at least. The Fenestrate sadly doesn't work here, but uh, let's see, six mana, so just enough for Awakener, Reunion, Sack to the Awakener. 
Let's read Dreadhound again. Whenever a creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from a library. Okay, so can attack. And uh, maybe I should just do this now. Get rid of the Death Toucher. And this can also be done at instant speed. Bat Whisper is a good one. Deciding if they want to move the mask. I hope they do. Nope, just a trapper. Now let's do this first, I think. Gives me a few more options, perhaps. Unless I find another way to make decayed zombies, but I don't think we have many of those on the cheap. Alright, so opportunists into Defenestrate draws a card. And then I can force them to chum block. And I probably want to kill the Bat Whisperer. Even though Trapper's annoying. That's another good one. Then I think I play my land outs. Flip the switch. So if I move to combat, what happens? Put on taps on Dreadhounds, I attack, they take five. And now we're looking good. Yeah, I don't think there's any point in using the crafted identity right now. This sacrifices a creature, so that triggers Dreadhound. But it's not enough to kill. So I think I'd rather keep up uh, Counterspell here. Yeah, I'll force them to tap out and then they can't use a Trapper. Get to make a zombie token regardless, which sets up our grafted identity as well. So, probably no bad way to do this. Attack with all would have them chump chump, take three, and then die to the Dreadhound triggers, so no need for grafted identity. On the play, hand is keepable. Ooh, nice Jadar. Definitely did some good work for us in the last game.
phone on black whites. And a dawn guard. So how do we want to handle this? It does have ward one. Can still attack into it with a zombie, finish it off with midnight ambush. Seems reasonable. Save Defenestrate for later. I guess I have to tap like this. And we've got our next zombie for the Awakener. Goodbye, Defenestrates. And then now, probably better to sack first. Keeping one of each. And we're on empty but pretty far ahead on board. Let's see if they can stabilize. Two, four. Does help. And they're gonna turn it into a three, five, so they can hold off the demon. Get her two damage in. Sadly, no plays for the turn. It's nighttime since we didn't cast anything back from the uh, Gavany Dongard. So, four for Menace. Yeah, we need some action of the top. Had a promising start, but uh, things have slowed down. Do want to keep one land in hand, since we can potentially loot it away. So now if I attack with both, they could trade. Grow the Outrider. They're also keeping up two mana, which I'm not trusting. So, uh, let's just play the zombie and pass, I think. Fateful Absence. Alright. Uh, sure. Can crack our clue, see what we pick up. That one didn't feel too bad. Yeah, I think this is playable, but not a very high pick. Gets better in a more aggressive deck. Sure, I'll take four. Yeah, I think I'll wait on cracking the clue, actually, in case I have more discard. Yeah, that's a good one. So let's crack in response in case we find our Graveyard Hate card here. Nope. Yeah, points going off. All the good cards. Can kill the zombie. And then our scabs, not bad. A 
Night Ambush is minus two, minus two at the moment. So it could be enough to kill the Dawn Guard. If I attack into it with my Decayed token. Sure. Worth a shot. I have to pay the wards, so I won't be able to play this camp first. Yeah, this block gets around the Midnight Ambush. So in the case they blocked with Outrider, playing the scamp first would have worked out better. Oh well. Yeah, it's gonna be close. And they still have a lot of action left here between Commando, Can't Stay Away, Get Back Your Zombie. So we're in trouble. That sort of helps. Sure. Do I want to tap the Observer? Might want to double block with it and the zombie, so probably no. Keep land in hand for discarding purposes. Yeah, Jadar plus Opportunist is a pretty sweet combo. Need our Death Toucher to block Behemoth. Still feels like we're behind, but the Opportunist certainly gives us a shot. Main phase Commando, so they don't want it to switch to nighttime. That's interesting. So it's night time, the wolf is scary. Yeah, I mean we cannot keep taking a ton of damage over and over. Although if I lose my hobbling zombie, the behemoth gets to start attacking. All right. So, that one I'll double block. <laughs> Alright. Get to draw from Opportunists. Our own Behemoth. Gonna be close. Probably just Behemoth first, see what we draw. A 
and Redhound. Is it too little too late? I mean, I imagine they block my zombie here, but probably no reason not to attack. So hopefully we can survive the incoming attack. It's definitely close if they send everyone. So they've got us dead next turn. Yeah, it's probably just Dreadhound smash with the team, see what happens. Poden deciding what to do next. They've got four blockers. They can add a fifth. Well, it is daytime again. Still taking a lethal in the air next turn. So, Dreadhound and then Awakener can also activate. But doesn't matter what we draw since we're going to be tapped out. So... Yeah, I guess turn everyone sideways and see what happens. Well, it's looking hopeful. Don't know if there's a way out for them. We'll see. All right, so view battlefield. So these two are dying, this one is not. This dies, this dies, these both die. Opponent takes three, so yeah, this looks good to me. I can sax. I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, damage is fine. And then I'll go full control to sag my zombie after damage in case it's needed to the Awakener. Bunch of triggers on the stack. And we'll add the Awakener trigger here on the zombie, just in case. Do need full control for this to work, otherwise the decayed zombie just dies. And yeah, Dreadhound to the rescue. That was a close game. Just goes to show how good Dreadhound can be on stalled boards like these. We're on the play. Nice hand. Yeah, that was a, a really good game of magic. I didn't know who was going to win until the very last turn of the game, pretty much. hit for one. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to expose opportunist to removal. The alternative is scab. But it's much more efficient to go scab plus foul play next turn potentially. Opponent just making a token. Maybe they have their own eaten alive they want to use here. No blocks. Maybe a vampire. But yeah, Opportunist draws off opposing decay tokens too, so... It's a pretty awesome card. Might be 
a candidate for best uncommon in the set. Alright, they get their captain, that's fine. And yeah, this is pretty gross. We get to foul play, play a scab, draw a card. Make a clue. And we got this card 10th pick, remember? It was in the same pack as Jadar. And we wield the opportunist somehow. Oof, Awakener is great too. Uh, let's see here, any flash creature I should be aware of in black-white? No, I think we're good to attack. Yeah, I guess there's a 3-1 flash, that's true, but we did have the ambush for that one. Alright, we'll pass. Alternatively, I could have used Awakener main phase just to trigger Opportunist. It's unlikely for me to have an opposing creature die if I'm only left with one mana anyways. But yeah, trying to maximize opportunists during your turn and the opponent's turn is kind of important. Okay. Well, it's pretty good. So opponent gets to catch back up. Guess we'll use the Awakener. Huh, no lands, eh? A lot of removal, <laughs> double eaten alive, ambush, and defenestrate. That's pretty much all the removal in our deck. Not what we need right now. So we'll crack a clue. And uh, I guess I need to main phase this so I don't discard to hand size. And we can flash it back end of turn two. Alright, a bit of an awkward turn, but next turn we get to play Behemoth. Prioritize exiling creatures, which they can more easily get back. Don't have high hopes for Behemoth surviving. Yeah, drawing all our removal when our opponent was on the Wrath of Board plan. It's not ideal, but uh, this game's gonna go for a while. Behemoth exiled. And a cut purse. Okay, how do we feel about playing Dreadhounds before killing a bunch more stuff? Yeah, seems reasonable. They want to tank with a zombie because we might need it for Eaten Alive. Although the upside of attacking is that we get the extra Dreadhound damage too. And I guess we have Horde to enable Eaten Alive, so maybe it was still worth it to attack. Oh no, right to Oblivion. That's unfortunate. Good news is our opponent's empty-handed, bad news is we've got a lot of catching up to do. So, what's the plan here? Can play Horde, plus 
Midnight Ambush. Horde Double Eaten Alive is an option too. You can also let it go to nighttime. And then Ambush can kill a bunch of stuff. But playing the Horde to exile these two seems pretty relevant, so let's do that instead. And then... If I ambush this dies, they get to put a counter somewhere, which is probably here, so that hurts probably too much, we're at 6. So we'll exile this. I guess exiling this so they can't disturb is also relevant, I hadn't really considered that. Although it's just a 2-2 which we can pretty easily kill. Yeah, let's just uh, and then probably not attack for two yet in case we need sacrifice fodder. Sure. That's acceptable. They would probably block if I attack. Although that's uh, also a close call. It might switch to nighttime automatically anyway at some point. Probably keep land in hand since we have the looter. So let's just kill this. Hit for three. Possible they would have taken the three and then switching to nighttime is better for my next ambush. We'll try it like this. That's definitely dying. And I guess I could do it now. This could be worse in the event where my opponent plays a big scary flyer and I need the minus 13 So it's night time. Uh oh, points looking at their graveyard. Okay. Well, can defenestrate and present lethal, so if they don't have something relevant, they're dead. Sure. All right, close one. All righty, on the draw. Hand has potential. Cultist can cantrip. Sadly, Identity we cannot cast using the Observer mana. I do still need double blue for that. I think the two removal spells make it keepable. Beggar is okay. Well, it's going to be a bit of a staring contest here. I guess I can attack. If they flash in the wolf, we can kill it.
Birds grafted identities online. Still nothing. Is this another opponent with a wide sweeper? We faced it twice already. Candle trap, sure. Good sacrifice fodder for a grafted identity. Still no target for it though. Alright, I'll spare them the attack. Not a very eventful game so far. Yeah, I'll counter that one. Before the flip the switch runs out of utility. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna pass here. Our opponent could be flooding out for all we know. Don't really get to punish him. Probably still fine to play a land. Just needs something to apply a bit of pressure. Still possible they're holding a sweeper. Uh oh. Not the card we wanted to see with the game that's dragging on. And they can already flash it back next turn. I need my Rotten Reunion. Can discard one. Midnight Ambush, presumably. And then if I keep up Ambush, I can shrink down an Ant and block it. Not sure if that's better than just playing Zombie, but if we suspect a Sweeper, I guess it is. Yeah, that's a lot of Ants coming our way. And then what to do with the author ants? I guess trading is fine. Uh, Behemoth is good. Keeps up defense traits. Probably sag zombie over occultist still. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So do I jump with Occultist or Observer? Probably Occultists. Fair enough. I 
Yeah, the zombie can just trade for the insects, and then I guess we can disturb. Sure. Could also use the observer to pay for disturb. Might be worthwhile. Alright, this is only one that attacks that it loots. And then I can crawl back the behemoth. Put counter on zombie. Okay, never mind. Point is empty handed at least. Can trade on the board for the ants and then our flyer can take over. And still have a grafted identity, so don't actually hate my position. The uh, crawl from the cellar only lets you put the count from a zombie. This is a spirit. Alrighty. Um, exiling the beggar has its advantages. As it wouldn't be coming back. Although it's not really bothering me at the moment. Uh, if I crawl from the cellar, I can get back the hobbling zombie. Seems decent. And then play it. Just straight for the wolf. Yeah, once the beggar dies and comes back, I guess Grafted Identity looks good on it. Problem is, every single small creature the opponent draws at this point is pretty scary. So maybe I, I take the 4 here and trade for the Sanctifier instead. We'll see. All right, there we go. Now we're talking. Now if I draw my removal spell that needs a creature to be power two or less, I wouldn't be able to use it second main anymore since the opponent's creatures grow. Although that's a pretty marginal scenario. It's probably fine to attack. Or, I guess I could eat an alive, exiling the Sanctifier. Uh, sure. Could actually attack into the beggar, hoping they block so we can steal it. Get rid of all our lands. And then the unblinking observer can go. All right, the opportunists showing a big here. Okay. 
Okay, that's another good one. And I probably wanted to scamp first, just I guess waiting to see what we draw of the archive font. Alright, actually got rewarded somewhat. Who needs to play creatures when you can just draw all the cards? Opponent also flooded quite badly, to be honest. All right, that's a that's a good card. Get to make two four fours. That attack for eight. Step one. So we have him uh, on a two-turn clock in the air, so probably no reason to do anything else. Although, technically, the zombie could attack too. Not a May ability on the uh, Archive Hunt. And then I can still use the Chronicle and activate Awakener. Still have a clue token, which is very far ahead. Probably could have played the last couple turns a little better, but uh, yeah, our deck definitely delivered. That Opportunist might have been our MVP. And we got it very late, so people don't recognize its power level yet. But in a set with Decayed, even the opponent will be triggering this without wanting to. And uh, yeah, the Awakeners have been good. Had a good amount of Sacrifice fodder, Jadar, another all-star which provided a lot of it. And then just a good mix of removal, of course, Grafted Identity, a bomb, and some good curve toppers. Dreadhound also winning us a game. So pretty happy with our first draft here. And uh, let's crack some packs. 10 at a time, why not? What did we get? Tracker, Blob, Absence, Specialists, Egg, Gisa, Sweeper, and Rite of Harmony. What's the best rare in this set of rares? They're all pretty awesome for limited, to be honest. The standout ones, Gisa, Burn Down the House, Consuming Blob, Tracker to a lesser extent, and then the egg can be awesome in like a blue-red spells situation. Um, I think Blob has the most, you know, upside potential if it goes uncontested for a while. Although Gisa might be in a better color. Blue-black so far has seemed one of the more impressive color pairs. So maybe that nudges Gisa to the top. And exiling cards from graveyards, of course, very relevant in this set. But uh, yeah, a lot of awesome limited cards here. Can't really go wrong. But yeah, for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.